GRE tunnels are our friend. They are inexpensive WAN links, they are migration tools, and they get us out of a jam when we need to connect to network islands. But GRE tunnels have a natural enemy, and this enemy can really diminish GRE's potential. In this video, we will see where that enemy is and how it can be defeated. We work for a retail company that sells clothes and accessories. We have a head office where all the data processing work takes place. We also have retail outlets where our products are sold to the public. These are usually small locations with two or three computers, a router and an internet link. Dedicated WAN links are expensive. So some time ago, we decided to use the cheaper option of tunneling to connect our outlets to the head office. But those were the old days. Our company is growing, and we now have plans for several hundred outlets across the country. And now we can see what GRE's enemy is. Scalability. Several hundred outlets means several hundred tunnels to build, manage, and troubleshoot. Maybe even more if you have backup tunnels. We need something a little less manual, a little more dynamic. There are a few options we could investigate. SD-WAN, for example. But the hero of today's story is going to be DMVPN. It is built using GRE tunnel technology, and it is still an inexpensive solution. Our head office will have one or more hub routers for the outlets to connect to. This is called a hub and spoke topology. When we use regular GRE tunnels, we need to statically configure them between two points. DMVPN, on the other hand, is dynamic and multipoint. That's how it gets its name, Dynamic Multipoint VPN. To keep things simple, we're going to start by looking at a single hub, a single spoke, and how the tunnel is dynamically built between them. If we're using GRE, we would need to configure an interface like this one for every spoke router. That's several hundred interfaces to support our retail outlets. That is not scalable. So DMVPN changes the tunnel type from GRE to multipoint GRE. This type of tunnel does not have a specific endpoint. The dynamic nature of DMVPN is also made possible using a protocol called NHRP. We'll have a look at that in more detail soon. The result is that we can now use a single tunnel interface on our hub router instead of several hundred. The hub router doesn't have any destination statically defined anymore. Instead, the spoke routers use NHRP to register themselves with the hub. In NHRP terminology, the hub router is called the Nextop Server, or NHS. We also need a way to map the hub's tunnel IP to its real IP. This is where the spoke will send GRE packets. This is the simplest way to configure DMVPN. It's called Phase 1 DMVPN. There are also phase two and phase three, which come with more features. We'll talk about those a bit later on. For now though, we need to understand NHRP and how it works with DMVPN. Generally, we need to reach some network behind the remote router. The addresses that we reach over the tunnels is called the overlay address. The router will look at the routing table and see that a tunnel IP is the next hop to get to the overlay address but we don't have static tunnels anymore. So in most cases, we don't know a router's real IP address and which tunnel address that maps to. And if we don't know which router owns this particular tunnel address, then we don't know which real address we need to send the GRE packets to. The critical task then is obviously to map the tunnel IP to the public IP. And we need a solution that's dynamic. We need something like ARP, which dynamically maps an IP address to a MAC address on a LAN. But technologies like ARP won't work over networks like the internet. And why? Because they rely on broadcast, and the internet is not a broadcast network. We can think of it as an NBMA network, or non-broadcast multi-access. And that is where NHRP, or Next Hop Resolution Protocol, really comes in. It's been around for ages. It's been used with frame relay networks and ATM networks. Its job is essentially to find efficient paths through an NBMA network. As we briefly discussed, NHRP uses a client and a server model. The hub router, as we said earlier, is the next hop server, or NHS. 
the spokes are the NextHop clients, and the real IP addresses are called NBMA addresses. I also mentioned earlier that this spoke registers itself with the hub. It does this by sending an NHRP registration message. This is like saying, hi, I'm here, I would like to build a tunnel to you. The hub accepts this and records the spoke's information, including the tunnel address to NBMA address mapping in a database. This dynamic process also makes it possible for us to use internet connections with dynamic public IPs. Whatever our public IP is at our spoke site, the hub will learn it during this dynamic registration process. If the hub wants to send traffic over the tunnel to the spoke, it simply looks up the tunnel to NBMA address mapping in its database, encapsulates the traffic in GRE headers, and forwards the packets to the NBMA address. Now, do you want to see this in action? Of course you do. Here's the topology we'll be using. There is one hub router and two spokes. The basic configuration is already done, so we can focus on the DMVPN parts. This topology and others are available to download for Patreon subscribers if you'd like to follow along or try it for yourself. We're going to move this pretty quickly so we can see how the traffic moves through the topology. On the hub, we create the tunnel, we give it an IP address, we set the MTU and MSS, and we tell it which IP to use to send encapsulated packets from. So far, this is just like a regular GRE tunnel. Now we move into the world of DMVPN and enable NHRP and MGRE. Spoke routers are much the same, at least until we get into the NHRP configuration. After enabling an HRP, we configure the IP address of the next hop server. That's the hub router's tunnel address. We follow up by mapping the tunnel address to the NBMA address. That's the real address on the internet. There is a simpler way to configure this NHS addressing and mapping if your router is new enough. I've included that config on the site if you want to check it out. And now we just quickly confirm that the tunnel is up by pinging the hub. And we're good. If we run show DMVPN, we can see all the peer addresses that this router knows about. So far, it knows about the hub router only. In the flags column, you can see the S flag, showing that this is a statically configured peer. The spoke shows as a peer on the hub router as well. However, notice that this has the D flag. This is because it has been dynamically learned on the hub. The hub has no configuration to tell it where the spoke is. It's all learned through NHRP. Pretty neat, right? Speaking of NHRP, we can see the raw NHRP information with show IP NHRP. This also shows whether the information was learned dynamically or if we configured it statically. In addition, we can see the tunnel IP mapping to the NBMA IP. Now we'll quickly get the final spoke configured it's pretty much the same, so we'll speed right through it. A quick trace route between the spokes shows that the tunnel is up. It also shows that the traffic flows through the hub router to get to the remote spoke. Remember this, it's important to know for the next video. And finally, we can see the same results with show DMVPN and show IP NHRP. There are a few different ways to use DMVPN. As I've said earlier, what we've seen so far is called phase one. Don't be confused by the term phase though, it's not a step in a process, it's not a security phase like IPsec, it's more like a version number or a feature set. But the problem is, phase one has some limitations. 
Phase two was created to address these limitations and phase three improves further on that. So in the next video, we're going to look at phase two and three, how they improve on what we've seen here and how they're configured. I hope to see you then.